here we have three links and when I click on one of the links instead of navigating to that page we get a side panel here and we open the page inside of that side panel without navigating anywhere else and then we can close it and open another one without creating any extra elements it's the same side panel being reused let's see how we can build this so I'm here in Webflow and I have a regular collection list with three items and if we go to the collection page of this CMS collection we can see that it is just a simple page uh, and it is consistent of a page uh, class we have the global code and we have the main and this main is what we will be targeting to move into the side panel so we don't want everything we don't want to double the, dub the global code that we have we just want to grab the main on the home page we have a page again and then we have a slide panel alongside the page the slide panel has two properties and these are the two properties that we will be using to determine what opens the slide panel and what the content will be the first one is this link selector so we can go and grab this coffee card and copy this class or maybe you can add the attribute that we have here by default but let's use the class to showcase this. It has to be the link. So it needs to be an actual link that navigates to that page. And then the content selector is the div that has all the content that we want to move into the slide panel. So in our case, it's a class called main. And that's all we want to do. Let's see what the code does. Uh, inside the slide panel, we just have the overlay. Maybe let me just show this really quick. So we have the overlay, we have a close button, and we have the slide panel itself. The slide panel is completely empty until we fill it with data. On the JavaScript for this, we have the embed, and on the embed, we have two attributes that are connected to the selectors. So you can go to settings, and you'll see here that we have these connected over here. And when you Take this and copy it into your project. You probably won't be starting from the clonable. You probably want to copy this into your own project. So if I, if you copy it into another project, it will be disconnected. So what I would recommend is that you create the component, uh, call it whatever you want to call it, and then immediately go to the JS embed, click on card selector, and connect to a property and call it like. Uh, link selector and then on the other one call it content selector and that's all you should need to do to create the same functionality in your own project to further explain what this does is it later on grabs all the cards or the links that have uh, the selector that we provided then it grabs the elements of the slide panel. It creates a timeline using GSAP. And then we have a close panel function and a show panel function. Then we add uh, click listeners to the close buttons and the overlay to reverse the timeline. And by the way, on the timeline, we have an on reverse complete function. So whenever it finishes reversing, playing backwards, then we run a closed panel. Uh, and then afterwards, we check here if the window is smaller than 768. So if it's mobile, then we don't do this. We want to actually navigate. If you want it to always open in the pop-up, you can delete this line, uh, but this just uh, stops it from working on smaller devices because um, we thought it makes more sense to just navigate to that page on smaller devices. Then we have a prevent default just to prevent actually navigating because it's a regular link. We get the link that it was supposed to go to and then we show the panel. After we show the panel or while it's animating, we also go ahead and grab the page. So the link that it was supposed to go to, we grab that URL, we fetch the data, and then we find the content selected that we assigned at the beginning. 
Then we just append it to the slide panel and that's pretty much it. Whenever you close the panel, it just sets the panel to display none and then it clears out the HTML so that it's empty again and it also removes overflow from the body so that you can scroll normally again. And that's it. If you follow the instructions, you should have the same behavior. So when you click on something, it opens the slide panel and then you can close it and that content is gone. So you don't have any duplicate content or anything anywhere on your page and you can dynamically open data inside your pop-ups.